When it comes to a fluoride varnish, did you know that sometimes there's additional ingredients in the varnish that can also help the tooth? My name is Carrie Ibbotson. I'm a registered dental hygienist and a national speaker on product integration and selection. And Pulp Dent has asked me to help them help you help your patients understand the additional ingredients that can help in that process. Today in this video, we're going to talk about the ingredients, how they work, and what happens within the varnish. And then we're gonna talk about some forms that you can use inside your practice to help with this integration. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about how to actually position this conversation so that you have multiple opportunities to engage with your patient and dialogue with them. Let's get started. Pulp Dent's Embrace Varnish is a time-released 5% sodium fluoride varnish that incorporates CXP technology, which is xylitol-coated calcium and phosphate. So the xylitol coating prevents the calcium and phosphate salts from reacting until they come in contact with the saliva. The saliva dissolves the xylitol and releases the calcium and phosphate ions, which react with fluoride ions in the saliva. Adding these ingredients to a fluoride treatment can help enhance the beneficial effects for the patient. Oftentimes in clinical practice, you'll see fluoride varnish as an age-dependent recommendation, when really it should be done on a risk factor recommendation. And in order to get that information from your patient, it can be really helpful to use forms that are called CAMBRA forms. CAMBRA stands for Caries Management by Risk Assessment. And the goal of CAMBRA is to help prevent decay and also help to remineralize teeth that are non-cavitated lesions. And so really what you're doing is looking at the risk factors that are based around decay and helping both you and your patient see if the risks that are involved in decay, if the patient falls within these categories. There is low risk category and then there's moderate to high risk category. And fluoride really has no benefit to people who are in the low risk category. But I think you'll see that when we get into the risk factors that are involved, so so many of your patients might fall within that moderate to high risk category, so they would actually potentially benefit from a fluoride varnish. Let's take a look at some of the risk factors involved in decay. The patients that would fall into low risk categories are one that have had no cavitated lesions in the last 36 months, people who have adequate home care, they use fluoride at home, they have infrequent meals, they don't have any orthodontic appliances, and they're not suffering with dry mouth. Now let's take a look at the moderate to high risk categories. And these are your patients that would likely benefit from a fluoride treatment. These patients have had a minimum of one to two lesions in the last 36 months. They're missing teeth due to decay. They have exposed root surfaces, overhangs or open margins on restorations, xerostomia, poor dental contacts, visible plaque, interproximal restorations present, and orthodontic appliances. A few other considerations would be their family dental health. Do they have developmental or acquired enamel defects? Do they have irregular dental care? Have they had chemotherapy and or radiation therapy? Do they use drugs or alcohol? Or is there a physical or mental disability where they are not able to perform proper oral care? One of the unique characteristics about the Embrace Varnish is that it can be used to fill superficial, non-carious enamel lesions, which are those white spots. So you're really giving the tooth what it needs when it needs it. There are some amazing non-verbal communication strategies that you can utilize to, again, help with that relationship and the conversation flow. One of those things is sit your patient up. When you have somebody staring down at you with a light, sometimes with a mask on in conversation, it can be very uncomfortable from a patient perspective. So if you sit someone up, it is a conversation and a dialogue instead of a judgment opportunity coming from their eyes. Also, take intraoral photos in the beginning to show how the patient has presented with. And then when you're utilizing those intraoral photos, take the time to show the patient where they're doing a really good job so that they can see what healthy is first before you jump straight into showing them what the disease portion is. 
it's important for them to see what that plaque buildup or the biofilm management or the lack of tissue stimulation that's helping to increase the inflammation that would all be reasons for a fluoride varnish to be recommended. But if you utilize an intraoral photo that you took in the beginning and show that healthy part first, you're gonna really bring them up and help them understand that they're doing a great job somewhere. We just need to help them tweak what they're doing and get better results for future outcomes. So I hope this gives you the opportunity to not only see the advantages of using the Embrace Varnish as far as the xylitol coated calcium and phosphate is concerned, but also how you can position something like a fluoride varnish and help the patients really see the benefit that it can offer them. Thank you so much for being here and until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye.